Hello, I am Diego Lisserazzo, and this is another video of the Game Dev Adventures. And this would be the fifth part of a series that I've created around uh, functions with Construct2. And hopefully, uh, well, I think this could be the last one. I have had a couple of questions about recursion. That was, uh, I think, the last video that we checked. So I may do something around that. It's not a specific about functions. It's more like recursions in, uh, well, one error that uh, uh, some people found while they were trying to follow the, the video. Not that what I did in the video was wrong. It's just that they uh, figure out that there could be one error and that's something quite common with functions and recursion so I may do a video around that but well anyway uh, check my blog check my uh, YouTube channel and my Twitter and make all kinds of questions like uh, I've tried to do some videos just around the questions that you have made and quite likely the following days I will make some more so well um, Today I created uh, kind of like the basic for a small uh, video game that you can see here. It's nothing really complicated. And the entire point of what I want to show today is how some functions can call other functions. We saw already a little bit of that with uh, recursion because that's a function that is calling itself. But uh, I, I just wanted to show a little bit of uh, the things that you could do with this one. So I'm going to show you what I have uh, for this basic game. It's nothing really complicated. And basically, you're in control of this little blue character that I'm trying to put here in the corner. So here he is. Uh, and you are supposed to avoid these little uh, enemies that are bouncing constantly while at the same time you pick the coins that are over here. So now the coins appear uh, randomly every two seconds and I'm supposed to receive a score, well, like, yeah, uh, add new score to what I already have and that we should have it here and also we are supposed to have a best score achieved uh, up to this point. Now, there are several things that are not working and that's on purpose because I wanted to show you how to do them uh, at the same time that, that well, I was, I was creating this and, well, the last thing that I didn't mention is that I also, when you press the space button, you can shoot and uh, we're supposed to destroy the enemies uh, or at least get some sort of score when you hit the enemy. So, uh, things that I haven't done. First thing, uh, I haven't really created anything uh, to add, to destroy the coins and to add a score whenever I touch them. So, uh, I want to do this with functions. So, the first thing that we are going to do is double click. This is the first time that you have done anything with functions. Perhaps you should go back to one of the four other videos that I have already uh, published. And if not, well, usually what you do is just double click somewhere in the layout and then go here for function now you can start working with functions so I'm going to add on the event tab and the event sheet here that we have I'm going to create a new function and this one is going to be on function uh, what I'm going to say here is like picked coin so obviously this is going to be called when I picked a coin so I am going to say and in another event, what if the player has a collision with another object? And this object is the coin. So here I am going to add the call to pick coin. So I am just going to say function, uh, call function, uh, picked coin. That is obviously the same thing that I'm using here. Uh, I'm not using any parameters for this. I, I am just, uh, 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 well, this is going to destroy all the coins. Okay, perhaps I should send uh, a parameter. So, well, uh, I am going to do something here. And is going to be, I'm going to destroy immediately the coin. And since I'm doing it here in this event, this coin is still on the same. Uh, group as the event so I still know which coin I'm talking about if I move this here 
I would not be able to know exactly which coin I'm talking about. So I destroy the coin. And the second thing that I should do is to augment the score. So that I'm going to do in a function. So this one is going to be add to the score 50, just because. And now, whenever I add to the score, I should be able to check if my score, my new score, is higher than the top score. That in this case, I'm adding it here, I'm hard coding it, and I'm saying that it's 500. So, uh, well, just to make it simpler, I'm going to say that I'm going to add 100. So I only have to pick five, five coins. And then I am going to create another function that is going to be uh, compare top score. Okay, and I should call this copy. And this is where we're going to do the magic. Cool function, compare score. So basically, you see that there is going to be a chain of events. When I touch the, the gold coin, I destroy it. And then I immediately call the function pick coin. Now the pick coin is going to add to my score and then is going to compare the top score. And to compare top score uh, is going to check the current score that we have it here in this variable, compare it with the top score, and if uh, this, uh, this is a new top score, I'm going to change the variable and I'm going to also update the label that we have here that says best. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a sub event I'm going to do it the, uh, the hard way, let's say, right click, uh, add a sub event, and what I'm going to say is I'm going to compare two bar, uh, well, basically two variables, yeah, two values, compare two values. The first one is going to be score, and I just want to know if this is greater than top score, done. And what I want to do here is uh, first to update top score. So this is going to be set value uh, top score equals score. So now if I had a 600 on score, top score is going to be 600. And the second thing is that I have to update this label that is called top score label. So I'm going to go top score label. I'm going to set the text as going to be best ampersand top score. So now let's test this. So I should be able to pick. Ah, uh, well, one thing that I'm missing. I'm not updating the score. So uh, I should do well. I should do that here. Why not in the pick coin? Uh, a score level 2, I guess. This is going to be a set text. Score ampersand score. Okay, I'm going to do it here. Okay, now it should work. So if I pick a new coin, I get a hundred and it's reflected here. And now I just keep picking them 200, 400. 500 and the next time if everything is right I should see how this one changes and there you go it changed and well apparently there was a coin that spawned right under me and you see that now both of them are being updated because I'm getting a higher score than what I had before right so my current score is my top score so of course the, this is something that would be great to to fix it and to do the use the plugin for uh, storing. The previous one was web storage. Now it's different. I haven't used that one much. Uh, so, but we we do know that it works. So in this event, we call this function, and this function we call this other function. So you see that it can be called several times. Now, just because I can, and now everything is done here, I am going to say, hey, 
What if now I, I'm I'm able to shoot these bullets whenever I press a space? What if when I'm able to hit one of the enemies, I also increase the score? And on top of that, since I'm already increasing the score, I also should compare the score. So what I'm going to do first is say when the bullet has a collision with the well with any of these monsters. So I'm just going to say it with well I'm going to do it with with both of them, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to copy it. So there you go. Uh, I'm going to cancel this. Uh, I am going to call a function that is going to beam. Um, monster hit. This is going to be called whenever I hit a monster. Okay, so monster hit. And now I am going to add something here that is going to be the collision that I was going to add before. A collision with another object. This one would be the monster, the first one, and we're going to see why. I am going to call a function that is going to be monster hit. And I am going to add parameters since I have three different kinds of monsters here and there are different kinds of plugins. I'm going to give different uh, um, points. So for the red, red one, I am just going to give 20, just because I can. And then I'm going to copy this entire event. You're going to see how I change it. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to replace the object. I want to replace enemy 1 with enemy 2. And here I'm going to do the same. Replace the object. I want to replace the enemy 1 by enemy 3. So now we have three different events. For the first monster, I'm giving 20 points. For the second one, I'm going to give, what do I know, 110. Just to make it different. And for the gray one, I am just going to say 150. Somehow that, that one is really valuable. Now, you see that in these three events, I'm calling monster hit, just with different parameters, right? With different values. So what I'm going to do here in monster hit is I want to update the value of the score. That is going to be a score. And now I have to consider the parameter that I received. So in this case, it would be function dot par, uh, param, and in parentheses, I have to mention which parameter this is. Since in Construct2, like in many uh, programming languages, you also start counting it zero, this one that I'm passing here is parameter zero, so I know that this should be like this. Okay? Now, after I change this, I also should update the label, so I'm copy-pasting here, what we already have here, and guess what? After I change the score here, regardless if it's because I'm hitting a monster or not, I also should figure out if this is a new top score. So you see that now compare top score is going to be called from two different places. And actually, there are many possibilities that uh, and chains of uh, events that are going to get there. The first one is when I pick a uh, coin, a gold coin, uh, that in depth, well, calling the pick coin and then the compare top score. But then I also have each one of the different hits that I can uh, give to the different enemies. Each one is going to call monster hit, that is going to update the score, and then this one is also going to compare the score. So let's see if that, that works at all. So uh, let me see, they move kind of fast. But you see that I was able to hit several times. I haven't picked any. Ah, okay. I think I set. Oh, yeah. This is a mistake. I shouldn't set the top score. I should add to the top score. So, my mistake. I'm sorry about that. I should say add to that. So every single time I was changing the, the, the value, I was not adding to it. So now, and you see that soon 600, and it changed it. Because even if I'm not picking coins, 
I'm getting a new score. I'm adding to my score, hitting the enemies. So that means that I'm increasing the score and it has to compare if it's a new best or a new top score. And of course, that's changing also the data here. So you can see that sometimes putting pieces of your logic into functions works pretty well because then you can call the same thing in different places. And also you saw how here in a function you can call another function. You can go all crazy and basically from monster hit call compare top score and in compare top score again go again to monster hit. But since that would create a cycle, you have to be really careful because that could be the problem that you could have uh, also with recursion that is creating uh, well uh, basically an infinite loop and that's going to get you an error okay so just make certain if you're calling uh, functions in between the two of them that you do know what you're doing and that you know that at some point the calling functions are going to stop otherwise this this can get really messy so uh, I think that was the last part then of what I wanted to talk about uh, functions I am going to go back to the manual to see if there's anything real important or any details that uh, that uh, would be uh, useful to cover. But uh, at the moment, I, I am going to leave it here. I have uh, a few videos to create around questions and, and some other things that I would like to cover. So I'm going to leave it at here. And you're going to find all my videos here on my YouTube channel, like I said before. And uh, whenever I post something on my YouTube channel at some point, and then I make the update on my blog. So just check it here. So remember, I'm Diego, like D die ego. So that's why I'm geek ego, geekego.com. So just check it there. That's that's my blog. Um, and give any comments, give any any suggestions that you would like, and also follow me on Twitter. Okay, so that was it for today. Uh, have a great day.